When we are born, you and I are not so much different from this deflated soccer ball. Now, that may sound weird, but let me explain. See, at birth, we have the potential to grow immensely, pumped up with an array of different life skills. Much like a soccer ball is so valued in a game, we strive to be as valued in the biggest game of all, the game of life. The question is, how do we pump ourselves up? TEDx organizers, distinguished guests, and my fellow soccer balls. My name is Duba Kurnikaran, and I consider myself an athlete. I'm quite proud of the title, actually, but I owe a lot of it to my parents. See, I'm their first child, so back when I was four or five, they were just a new mom and dad starting out. From what I've heard, my dad came home from work one day and he straight up said to my mom, Honey, let's sign our kid up for every sport we can think of. <laughs> and that's what they did. See, living in Canada, they figured I should start out playing Canada's number one sport, which is hockey. And to do that, I first tried to learn how to skate. When they asked me, I was super excited. I tied on my tiny little skates, I put on my helmet that was slightly too big for me, and I jumped onto the ice. And then, I immediately fell on my face. <laughs> you see, till this day, I've never really figured out how to stop on skating. After it became apparent that I was a kid meant to walk on normal ground, my parents were still encouraging. My dad said, son, maybe this isn't the sport for you. And my mom said, but we'll try something else. So my parents are from Sri Lanka, so they figured if I couldn't play Canada's number one sport, I should play Sri Lanka's, and that is cricket. Now, there aren't many opportunities for five-year-olds to play cricket in Canada, so they sent me to the next closest thing, t-ball. <laughs> for those of you who don't know, t-ball is very similar to baseball, except it involves none of the actual skill involved in hitting a moving ball. <laughs> Nevertheless, I was super excited. I put on my helmet that was slightly too big for me also. I stepped to the plate, put the ball on the tee in front of me, picked up the bat that was also slightly too big, and I swung. Ladies and gentlemen, that's when I realized I have no hand-eye coordination. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, my parents were still very encouraging. My mom said, my dad said, son, maybe this isn't the sport for you. And my mom said, but we'll try something else. So I had gone from the ice cream to the baseball diamond, and eventually I made my way to the swimming pool. When my parents asked me if I wanted to swim, I was super excited. I said, yeah, I love water. <laughs> I put on my goggles and my swimming trunks that were slightly too big for me, as evident in this picture, not this picture. <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and I leapt into the water. Back when I said that I love water, um, yeah, I left out a key word there. I should have said I love drinking water. <laughs> See, as a kid, it didn't register that I couldn't breathe underwater. And it didn't end well, so yeah, I wasn't the smartest kid. <laughs> Nevertheless, my parents were still very encouraging. My dad said, son, maybe this isn't the sport for you. My mom said, but we'll try something else. Now, despite my many misadventures with these certain sports, I did excel in a few. I learned to love the game of soccer. This was a game played on solid ground, involved very little hand-eye coordination, and you were allowed to breathe at all times. <laughs> it was perfect. I, over the years, I practiced and practiced. I worked on my shot, my accuracy, my speed, and eventually I worked my way up the ranks from bronze, silver, gold, metro, and I would represent my province at the national and North American level. Actually, just yesterday, my dad said, son, I think this is the sport for you. And my mom said, please don't try anything else. <laughs> now, I look back at all of this and I realize that sport isn't just something I use to impress girls or impress girls. No, <laughs> sport, sport has taught me a lot, actually. I look back now and I see situations that have forced me to become a leader, stepping up in tough times when nobody else wants to. I see situations that have forced me to work as a team, using each member's strengths for the benefit of the whole. And I see situations that have reminded me that giving up is never an option. When success seems futile, but the possibility is still there. So all these, these key skills that I've learned, they've shaped my extracurricular, my social, and my academic life. 
I look back at all of this and I realize that I'm extremely lucky to be offered the sport opportunities that I have earned. And this is mainly due to the, to the well-being of my family. And I also understand that there are kids in my community and around the world that do not have such opportunity due to financial need, their family status, or the fact that they have no family at all. And this really got me thinking. So I did what I usually do when I start thinking about things. I talked about it to my friends. And it turned out they felt exactly the same way. Before, before long, 20 or so youth from across Vancouver had banded together and started the Kids for Kids charity initiative of Vancouver. This was an initiative with one goal in mind, to ensure that every child has the right to play. So for our initiative, our first goal was to help a school in northern Sri Lanka that had just recently adopted 150 children recently affected by the war. These kids had lost their possessions, they had lost their homes, they had lost their families, and they were completely reliant upon the school. Now the school had a little bit of difficulty supporting their extra needs, and so we decided to, to organize a fundraising show with local performers, food and prizes, and a very big and generous audience, just like today. That, that night alone, we raised $8,500, with every single penny going towards those kids across the sea. And a portion of that money was put towards a self-sufficient scholarship fund. And I'm so happy to announce that actually just last July, our first two scholarships were awarded to two deserving and graduating children from that school. Now, we had just raised all this money to establish a scholarship, raise a fund, and raise awareness for these kids, but we had not really made a personal connection. And that became the next goal. So, I traveled to Sri Lanka this summer with the purpose of running a soccer camp, not just to teach physical skill, but convey the importance that sport can have on teaching life skills. I found myself, after I took the plane there, living among 150 different children aged from 11 to 19. I had the same food as them, I lived in the same place as them, I did the same activities as them, and it was awesome. It was like a summer camp in a tropical paradise. These kids who had suffered so much pain, they left that all on the ground when they stepped onto the field. The field was filled with laughter and smiles, and these kids supported each other, respected each other, and they had a great time. Now, there were kids that clearly excelled above the rest in soccer, and there were kids that played soccer similarly to how I skate, how I play t-ball and swim, but that didn't matter. These kids all had a great time. I met a special friend during this tour. This is Maxim. Now, Maxim is a very shy, down-to-earth, and very kind 17-year-old boy. Up until the age of 11, Maxim lived with his family in a village, and he was a very active kid back then. He was actually really good at sport. However, at age 11, his family was caught in the middle of Sri Lanka's civil war. And so, as innocent bystanders, Maxim watched as he lost his family, and he injured his right arm from a shell, which had to be amputated. Maxim had difficulty readjusting back to his active lifestyle. He, he had first of all, to overcome the emotional pain and also to regain the balance that after losing his right arm. It seemed that with every step, he regained balance and also with every regaining of balance, he, he healed a little bit inside as well. When I visited him the summer, I talked to Maxim before we stepped on the field and he was a little bit shy, a little bit, but very shy when I talked to him. However, when we stepped on the field, that all changed. He was all smiles, all laughter, weaving in and out of the kids, and to top it all off, he was one of the best players on the field. Now, if there's one thing you could take away from this presentation, it's that sport is so much more than just a game. Sport can empower children. Now, if you don't play sport, no matter what your age or your skill level, I encourage you to do so, because there are programs out there for you. And if you do play sport, which is awesome, by the way, I encourage you to look to others in your community and around the world that do not have such opportunities. And spread the trend of allowing every kid the opportunity to play. And before you know it, you'll have a generation of soccer players fully pumped with determination,
leadership and empowerment.